Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use the motion path in Cartoon Animator to show how it can be a very useful tool for timing your animations in a couple of different scenarios. If you're not yet familiar with this tool, please check out the Getting Started tutorial first. Let's start off with this animated map project. There are a couple of animated props already set up, and our goal is to have the ship move through them at a timed pace along a path. First, let's ensure that we select our ship, and then using the eyedropper tool in Path Properties, assign it to the green path we have already set up. We'll set the initial start point to 13.7% down the path. I then want to scrub down the timeline to right before the building pops up, and then move the progression slider ahead so that the ship arrives right before. The playback will then show the ship arrive right as the buildings appear. Let's open up the timeline and go into a bit more detail. As you can see, the initial movement we created set a key in the path progress track of the ship. We want it to stay in that position for a brief moment. To do so, I can simply double click a few frames down in the timeline and add another keyframe. This will automatically retain the same position data as the previous one, keeping it in place between those two points. We then want to repeat the process where the skull and crossbones pop up bringing the slider on the progression bar further down. Again, to have the ship stay at the Deadly Island for a brief spell, double-click again in the path progression track a few frames down. Since we're changing directions now, we can also flip the ship at the same frame. Let's repeat the process once again to get to the final destination with the treasure as that prop appears as well. It looks okay upon playback, but we can make the movements a bit more dynamic by using transition curve presets on the movement destination keyframes. Presets like Decelerate or Smooth are often suitable for this kind of ease in and out movements as you can see. When they're all set, you can see the result and also notice how the white points on the motion path indicate the movement speed at different positions along the path. That was fun, so let's move on to another scenario where we can tie multiple objects along different paths to coordinate a production pipeline motion graphic. First, let's create the first section of our path and then apply our wheat prop to the beginning at frame zero. Add a frame a little further down, I'll click and drag the wheat prop to a relative position I want to be in. This is another way to animate the position on a motion path aside from using the progression slider. Next, with the path selected, I'll click on generate keys with the wheat prop selected in the dropdown. This will bake the movement of our wheat prop allowing us to now duplicate that same path and move it to the next step of the production process. Duplicate by holding control and clicking and dragging. Here we need to go into path properties and click and drag both ends of the motion path into the proper position. I'll then proceed to apply the container of harvested wheat to that portion of the path. Note that we now have the option to follow path keys or picked path points. We want to retain the movement of the baked keys, so let's select that. The raw and harvested wheat props will now depart and arrive at their destinations at the same time. I want the harvested wheat to only leave after the raw wheat has arrived, so I'll click and drag the path progress keyframe further down. However, now it takes a while to get to the initial path position. To fix that, I'll double click on the very first frame in the path progress track to have the wheat stay at that initial path position from the very beginning. Once that's done, let's duplicate the path once again. However, this time we have a little complication with our 90 degree turn, so we need to add an additional point to the end point via the Add Points button in the Path Properties. We can then right click on our bag of wheat and pick the appropriate path, again using the Follow Path Keys option. Once again, we need to click and drag the Path Progress keyframe range to the appropriate frame after the harvested wheat arrives at its destination. 
Again, add that initial keyframe at frame 1 to ensure it stays in position until it's supposed to move. Let's duplicate the last leg of our path and repeat the process to set the endpoint to the back of the truck. This time we're applying our finished bread product to the path and once again ensuring that the path progression keyframes are in the proper place. Alright, we've got our path progression and initial timing set up. Let's spice up our animation with some elastic motion presets. Let's start by applying a fade in and fade out template to the raw wheat at the appropriate points on the timeline. Note that they will appear as motion clips in the motion track that you can move and modify if you need to. Here I'm just ensuring that speed is enabled and shortening their duration. If you're focusing your editing on a single object in the scene, especially if it's obscured by other objects, it's often a good idea to select it in the scene manager and use the isolate button on the toolbar to only show the selected object. I can then proceed to apply the same fade in and fade out templates to that object, naturally ensuring that the fading timing corresponds with the movement. To make sure that it only becomes visible at the point where it's supposed to fade in, you can use the visibility tool on the top toolbar as well. Ensure that it is set to invisible right from frame 1, and only enable visibility at the beginning of the fade in motion clip. Once you've applied all of these techniques to the other relevant props in your scene, then you can save the entire scene along with the animation. Under Scene in the Custom tab, click on Save and simply name your scene. After that, you can reload it at any time and all of the motion path and other animation data will be saved. That's it for this tutorial guys. Hopefully it gives you some inspiration on how to use this awesome new tool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.